Okay. Our speaker for the Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa region is Joseph Kaleba, who is showcasing the Democratic Republic of Congo. Joseph has an MA in English didactics and is currently a doctoral student at the National Pedagogic University and lecturer in the English department at ISP Bukavu. He is the East Regional President of CLASS and is particularly interested in English clubs. Take it away, Joseph. Yes, there. <laughs> Kaleba. Thank you. Thank you for the floor. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, I would like to welcome you to this uh, interesting presentation with the title Emergence of English in the GRC Primary School Education. As uh, the moderator just mentioned, I am called Kali Bowen Joseph from DRC. Without transition, allow me to just give the skeleton of my talk, or presentation. I'm going to speak about the DRC's national and linguistic context, the Congolese child receptiveness to the English language, the English language state teaching and learning style used in some private schools in DRC, the process through which English is getting recognized in DRC primary school education. And then in this, uh, I'm mentioning how uh, the emergence of English in the primary school government and uh, also the selection of uh, some pilot school in DRC as uh, just a starting point. So start with, uh, let's look into the DRC's national and uh, linguistic context. DRC is amazing. It's really an amazing country in the way that it's a ethnically and a linguistically diverse country, which is located in the Central Africa um, with uh, over 66 million people and 200 ethnic groups and several hundred local languages and dialects that are spoken in this, in this country. This linguistic diversity is uh, bridged both by widespread use of French and the national intermediate languages, that is Kikongo, Chiluba, Swahili, and Lingala. French is uh, the official language, which is used uh, in administration, in also education, business, even in the church. Some churches also use French as the official language. But in the West, they speak Kikongo and Lingala. In the center, they speak Tiluba. And in the, in the east, where I am from, we speak Kiswahili as a regional language. And these are the four lingua franca that we use in our country. And English is taught as a foreign language in secondary school, as well as in colleges and universities. So in this prelinguistics context, English is taught as a third or fourth language for the learners who, who learn English because uh, every single child will have their first, uh, their first language of mother tongue. They will have to learn one of the four regional languages that I've mentioned, and they will also learn French as the official language. So English will, auto will, will obligatorily come at the third uh, position. And if the child has, has learned two of these uh, four uh, uh, regional languages, you'll see that English will be coming in the fourth position. So this makes a student not really uh, being a uh, performant. And English is introduced in secondary school either the first and the second form, two hours or one hour per week. And in the third and sixth form, it can be five or six hours per week. And this depends on the school as well. However, the students studying technical subjects like fishing or sailing or agriculture and social sciences, they have English only for two hours per week. Um, in, this, in, in this situation, it is not easy for people to learn English correctly. Another challenge is about teachers. Many teachers are not qualified. Even those who are qualified, they don't have access to uh, in-service training. 
And then the, the point, because we are discussing the teaching of English for primary school uh, learners, the point is it has never been in Congo. There has never been a training, be it in service or a pre service training for teachers who are teaching English in primary school. It's amazing that people are just trying to teach, but they have never been trained. Even the teachers who teach English at secondary school, where is it? Out, they don't also have uh, many opportunities for trainings, and all these make a problem for a Congolese, even teacher and learner who are learning English and who are teaching English. And because of this, teachers are not motivated, some learners are not performing, and consequently, the, the, the children here are not really performing. Regarding uh, the attitude of a Congolese child towards English, the Congolese child is curious to hear from someone speaking English, be it on the street, at school, uh, or elsewhere. Some of them, they even venture, they take a risk of pronouncing some, some English word, even without knowing their meanings. I can testify this myself from my own experience. When I was going to Kinshasa, because Kinshasa is two hours flight from, from Bukavu where I live. So I was going to a conference, teacher association conference, and some people would go and uh, pick me from the airport. So on the way, we could speak English and we could meet some, some children on the streets. Hearing us speaking English, one of them uh, had courage to stop me and uh, put me the question, can you teach me when I want to introduce myself what I can say? And I started teaching on the streets. And the child took me over five minutes. And the guy who was coming to collect me well, got impatient and asked me just to go. So I, 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 I understood that there is a need on the ground. And this willingness uh, and ability to, of the people to listen and involve in developing an appreciation of the listener-speaker relation learning to attend actively and responding to all the verbal and non-verbal clues that are used to convey the meaning. This is clearly also seen in some private schools where English, the English language is being taught without even the permission of the government. In DRC, some private, uh, some private primary schools have already incorporated the teaching and learning of English in their school, but there are three styles. I'm sorry, for my slide here I mentioned two, but uh, after the research I discovered that there is another style that I want us to mention. The first is what? Some, in some private schools in DRC, we have six forms, P1 up to P6, and there are six uh, teachers in each class. The same teachers who are teaching the other subjects in those classes, they are also entitled to teach English, even if they are not qualified. The second style is in some schools, in private schools in DRC, they hire one teacher who will be teaching English from P1 to P6. And the other teachers, they form masters, they are now dealing with other subjects. And the third, the third style that I did not mention in my slide that I recently learned uh, in Kinshasa, there are some bilingual schools. In those bilingual schools, there are, there, there are two teachers affected in the same classroom. I mean, one teacher is entitled to teach English as a subject. The same teacher also teaches other courses in English, so he is using English as a medium of instruction. And because it is a bilingual school, another teacher in the same class teaches also some of the, the, the courses in French. So these are the three styles that are being used in DRC. As you can see, some teachers are not read as, as um, the, the students are confused. They don't know which style which is, which is being used. So it is also noticed that in, in DRC, some schools have already developed their own curriculum. They are not using a national curriculum. Each school has its curriculum. For example, in Bukavu, there are 20 private schools 
and they have 20 different curricula. Can you imagine? Some other schools do not have even a curriculum. Teachers are only picking up some materials here and there and they come to teach. They don't even understand what they are teaching. All what they are doing is just to make money and to maintain their jobs. That's all. And not, they, are, they are not doing it really professionally. So in all these cases, no inspector is entering the, the, the school to, to, to see what teachers are doing in the schools because English has never been uh, officially introduced in, in the school. So learners are confused. If a learner can move this school to another one, it is not the same way of teaching that we, or learning that they will meet because each school, each private school is developing their own way of doing things. But from this, the, an idea has come to some Congolese people how to introduce English at primary school. And this great idea to officially introduce the English language and learning at primary school in GRC was initiated by the participants in the National English Language Symposium in 2015. The NELS was uh, organized by the Congolese Language Support Society, PLUS, our organization, the American Embassy Kinshasa through the Congo American Language Institute, Kali, and the Congolese National Ministry of Primary Education. And this noble idea has been materialized by the current Minister of Education in April. He signed the decree and he, made, he set up a commission that is entitled to design a national curriculum and the textbook to be used now at the, the old uh, primary school. Uh, sorry. Uh, after this, the, our association has noticed that because there is a disorder, each school is just doing whatever they want. And seeing that the Minister of Education has now allowed English to be taught at primary school, class has decided to collaborate with the Ministry of Education in designing the English language curriculum for all the primary schools in DRC. You can note that this primary school curriculum is the first of its kind in the GRC education system. And it has been done with the view to help the Congolese to start learning English from the beginning of their studies. But there have been many challenges. Can you imagine? In 2015, we proposed to the minister to introduce this. 20, 2015, 2016, 2017, and now, 2018, in April, the minister signs. But from April to, to November today, almost uh, three or four months, we have not had really enough time to conduct research and to design material and to, to make available the material for the teacher to use. Yet, we have to, 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 to prepare something provisionally to help. And this provisional curriculum has been designed to help now prepare the teachers. The teachers who are not qualified, the teachers who are not trained, we are going to train them and to prepare them. We, we provide them with some material that we are going to use in the primary school. And this will be done in collaboration with class and the government. So, what's the, what are the aims of uh, this curriculum that we are proposing, this provision curriculum? This curriculum aims at promoting in Congolese child positive attitude and develop an appreciation of the value of spoken, read, and written English. It also aims at creating and fostering and maintaining the Congolese child's interest in expression and communication in English. Again, it wants also to promote and to develop the Congolese child's ability to engage appropriately in listener speaker relationship in English and to develop the Congolese child's competence in listening, speaking, reading, and writing in English. Also, to develop their co cognitive ability and capacity to clarify thinking through oral language, writing, and reading. And finally, the curriculum aims at enabling the Congolese child to speak, read, 
and write English acceptably. There are appropriate strategies because we know that we are in a French speaking country and we have experienced many problems with teaching English at secondary school. This time we, we are cautious. The curriculum foresees an appropriate strategy to help young learners of primary school in GRC to effectively develop the disciplinary jurisdiction. And this strategy is the oral communication through fun activities that are related to games, recreation, entertainment, songs, uh, role play games, mind dialogues, repetition, coloring pages, uh, making images, drawing, also organizing individual works, pair works, group works, collective works, and all these strategies we hope that they are going to have. All these activities, they are convey knowledge, know-how, and the knowledge to be resource in order to benefit of the child of the children to build the skill necessary for the acquisition of the English language. The songs, for example, the songs will be pre-recorded uh, on CD-ROMs for children and their teachers uh, to experiment. And it should be that it should be noted that the stage of uh, the systematic learning for primary school learners will promote, will insist of uh, listen, look, and repeat. This strategy will also be used to, for the fixation of the thematic vocabulary in the children. We need to reinforce, we need to insist here, because we have experienced a secondary school teachers tending to teach grammar, grammar. They can even finish the whole 50 minute lesson and the, 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 the lesson, the learners will never practice. So this primary school curriculum foresees the strategies and try to make it clear that the course of English at primary school in TRC will not be a systematic grammar course. The Congolese child will use the English language initially without knowing the rules. Of course, some grammatical structures will be, will be taught like affirmative form, negative, present tense, and some vocabulary, of course, like uh, behind, under, and whatever. But all this will be made in a situation, not being taught as a systematic grammar course. So this English language curriculum for primary school in DRC is essentially based on the theories and methods such as the autolingualism, the behaviorism, and all other me uh, methods and theories appropriate to the teaching of oral communication. And to do this, the technique called TPR will be used for the implementation of the teaching and learning situations. TPR is known as uh, the word for active non-verbal answer. TPR is an approach of teaching language, and this method is based on the synchronization of language and the physical movement or gestures. And through this TPR, the Congolese teachers will be giving orders to their learners in their target language and the target language here is english and the learners will be meeting the means of action driven by all parts of their body and this is how it will be done teachers giving orders students just responding by also using their body movement because it is not possible to start english in all the primary schools now in GRC. We will only select 50 schools in the following uh, areas, the town. We'll be starting by Kinshasa. In Kinshasa, we'll, select, we'll be selecting 50 schools as pilots. In Kisangani, in Lubumbashi, in Pandaka, Bandundu, Goma, and Bukavu. Bukavu, that is the town where I live. It is, it is two hours flight from, from Kinshasa. And we, are, we, have, we, have, we, are started, uh, we have managed to select schools from different corners of the country because we want to have this to be national. And given that the teachers, we, we, have, we don't have books and the teachers are not also qualified to teach, we are going to organize, class is going to organize the training sessions for prospective teachers of English at primary school in TRC. We'll also provide these teachers with uh, some material to use. 
we have some provisional material to use that we are going to propose and the teachers will be using what will be given to them. So, what uh, can I say in short? The curriculum will be tried in those schools that we that have uh, mentioned here for all this year long. And the, 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 the English language will be taught twice a week for 45 minutes per class sequence. The English course will be translated into learning situations and the latter subdivided into sequences. Class and uh, class members and inspectors will be visiting those schools regularly and they'll be making a report to the minister. And this report will be processed by the Minister of Education and they will see all what will, will have gone well will be maintained. That will not go well will be maybe corrected or improved or simply changed. And it is after that that the English language will be generalized in all primary schools in GRC by next year. So it is with this note that I would like to put an end to my presentation today. If there are questions, remarks, or suggestions, especially suggestions because we are just uh, at our trial stage, we would like really to, to learn from the world on how we can, we can just uh, cope with such a challenge, starting English at the first time, officially, but we are having all these challenges. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Kaleba. Are you Can with you me? see the questions? Adriana is. Well, okay. not Can yet. Look at, Where? Uh, the right side, on the right side of the screen, there is a chat box and you can see the question. Adriana is asking a question. She's saying that how does TPR connect to this? How does TPR connect to uh, the teaching of yeah. English at primary school? I can't see. The question is exactly like this. Question. How does TPR connect to this? Well, um, TPR connects to, to this in the sense that uh, children want to use their, board, their, their, their body parts and you know behaviorism encourages uh, teach, uh, learners just to you know to, 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 to memorize but TPR come to reinforce because it is using even the body movements if a, a, a child if you speak to a child stand up without moving Maybe they will not get you, but when you say stand up and use your your hand, by seeing the child will also learn. That's why TPR. Thank you very is much, Kaleba. I hope Adriana. Is that clear? This helps. If not, please keep wow. typing in the chat box. And we have Yasser. Um, he's saying that so French is dominant in Congo. Can you see the question now? Oh, actually, I have a difficulty to see the questions. I don't know what is going on. I can see the oh, okay. the chat here empty. Don't can worry. See. I can How do just I get to connect uh, paraphrase the question for you. So uh, Yasser is saying that French is dominant yes, in Congo. Please. So. How do your learners, how do you motivate your learners or how are they motivated to learn uh, English? Oh, great. That's a great question, you know. Uh, really, French is a dominating language in, uh, uh, in DRC because it's the official language. But uh, uh, taking the diagnostic, um, uh, sister, sorry, the diagnostic status of English. English is viewed as a prestigious language, you know, because everybody speaks French, everybody speaks Swahili and the other regional. But when somebody speaks English, they appear uh, prestigious. That's why it also uh, attracts the children' curiosity. And you see, from the time they are curious to learn. 
and we also take advantage of this curiosity and we teach them English. That is how English Thank is Thank you being very much, Kaleba. I hope, um, yeah, sir, this helps. And another question I can see is that, is teaching English in your country is language based or grammar based? That is exactly what I, I was mentioning. Mm -hmm. At primary school, it's grammar based. It's really grammar based, not language. -based. So teachers teach the language. They don't teach about the language. And that is the problem. They don't contextualize. So you can see only a teacher teaching grammar, grammar, and the learning, the learners just memorizing, memorizing. So the, 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 the teaching is not contextualized. And this is what we want now to correct because we would like to start it at primary school. We want to correct this mistake. That's why I said the English language will not be a systematic grammar course. It will be really uh, turned into situations so that the learner can also learn the English language uh, okay, naturally. Very good. Thank you. And another question What language do they speak in their families? Oh, I can't tell for certain what language because I mentioned that we have over 200 languages and dialects. So uh, every learner, they have uh, their language that, that they speak in their families. For example, in the South Kivu province, there are, there are people who speak Kilega, myself speak Kilega. There are people who speak Mashi, other people speak Kibembe. Other people speak Kikuliro. So many, many languages. Okay. They, they and one family. more question. We have time for another question. Do you teach English culture too? That's the question. If I teach, oh yeah. Of course, we we teach English uh, English culture. You know that you you can't you can't separate a language with this culture. It's impossible because uh, culture is uh, part and parcel of the language. But we don't have really a specific course. For example, at uh, primary school, we, no, at secondary school, we only teach this culture in the context, like in authentic material, like some text that speaks about the Anglo-Saxon system and uh, uh, like that, we, we teach. And also in literature, in literature, uh, we have some we have some novels that we use and also but at college there is a course there is a course entitled contemporary language speaking societies in the third year this really uh, speaks about all the culture of uh, the people the english language but anyway by also teaching we can't leave the culture behind because it is not possible to separate all right thank you very very much Kaleba thank you very much for your for sharing your experience with us and we're going to have a five minute break and then we will continue thank you very much goodbye thank you I appreciate it